TNC playing, you've got Motivate Trust, you've got SMG, all these veteran players as well, especially on SMGs and vying for that one slot. So a lot on the line. This is upper bracket, so teams aren't going Step to be eliminated yet, but you want that steady board. ride towards uh, those finals. So every game counts, every win counts. And as we mentioned, SMG, they've got Moon on. He's got a lot of proof, as does everyone else on SMG. We're going to have to see if they can carry through and prove their point. Look at this though, John, SMG, a bit of a clever smoke going on here. So they placed the ward on the northern side of the river. Now they've smoked up. I think this is a bit of a surprise tactic. But can they get to the high ground of that buy side triangle? They're going to try and sneak up from the backside. It's taking a little bit long though. I'm not they sure if they're going to miss out games. on too many bounties, but no, there's no heroes around. So they're going to be able to steal one. Now, perhaps get a kill. Tim's going to run right into him. Light Strike Array, of course, is going to land. And Tim's, he's going to get a nice Earth so Strike. In fact, a bit of a ravage there. But it looks That's like he is indeed set round. to die. One Mid one, the one. first one to pick up first blood for game number one. And I'd say there's no better way to start. SMG, very little clever kind of smoke there to get this game one started. That's what you like to see. You want to be aggressive with that axe. Mid one went for that level one battle hunger along with Raji's cold feet. A lot of DOTs that the lion can't really run away from. And just having this nice early extra start for mid one allows him to control that lane a bit better. You can see Bok already copying some of that damage here. There's not too much Tims can do once they commit those spells onto the brood. And it's going to take a few levels for the Broodmother to start to sustain herself here with a web spam, with the insatiable hunger trades. And even if you have that hunger up, not like you want to right click an axe so it's a bit tougher for the brood to keep in touch there and smg oh, are just playing this perfectly fine perfect as perfect as you'd want it to be absolutely that, that's kind of the reason why i was i was so impressed by the uh, the last pick axe coming out from smg is the fact that it kind of answers the brood mother so well and damage that can fly out can be very effective although top lane looks like they are going to go after gabby Gabby already taking a lot of damage and so this is another thing we talked about during the drafting stage, John. The double stun lineup in this offlane for SMG. Quite potent. Dragon Tail, Light Strike Array. You see how much damage that Gabby has to take on the Spectre. It's not going to be very fun. And of course, Boomy at those earlier levels on the Phoenix really can't do much up against this dual lineup. It's a slower lane for TNC. It's just the nature of the Spectre. The Phoenix needs levels as well to really harass out. Once you get level 2 Fire Spirits, you can sort of try to zone out KP a little bit better. But it's a bit tough. And every single time KP can, as long as the lean is ready, the stun combo on Gabby is going to be super annoying. So he's he's got to play it a bit safer. He's still finding some good last hits, though. KP's not really doing enough to stop that. And all things considered, I think this is pretty stable for TNC. Once you hit level 3 on KP, it's going to be hard to zone him out. But at the same time, you're going to have to deal with this Phoenix level 2 Fire Spirits at his own level 3 spike. If not that, then the Sunray, which does great percentage damage against the DK and great sustain for the spec. So once you hit those level 3 spikes, this should stabilize for TNC a bit more. Absolutely. Well, it's the one lane we haven't really talked about yet, the mid lane, where you'll see Armel and Moon against each other on the DP and the Kunkka. It does feel like either hero can kind of pull ahead, but right now Armel having the, the much better time on that Kunkka with the Tidebringer harass. Like Moon unable to really harass out Armel very much in this, in this mid lane. Does that bother you at all, John? The fact that this DP's not had the most amazing start so far. In fact, hold that Kunkka's top lane. We do end up indeed losing Boomy on the Phoenix. Back to my point, are you bothered that, that Moon is not having as good as of a time as, as you may have expected on the Death Prophet? Yeah, it's going to be tricky for Moon. Like, it's a melee matchup for the DP, so you'd expect the Spirit Siphon to be a bit more effective, but RML is just playing really well with the Tidebringer, threatening with his Torrent as well. And the one thing that the Kunkka has a little bit better here is that dip into that small camp in the jungle. Oh. Tidebringer's a little bit spell. Afu uh, looks like he's going to be in a spot of danger. Does end up going down, so Boomy and Gabby, they'll get a bit of revenge in that top lane, and of course he didn't really have the help of KP around as he was farming at the T1 tower, but a little bit of revenge there for the side of TNG, TNC, excuse me. That'll be the uh, the first kill on the board for them. That's yeah, a nice easy pickup. Um, that's what happens when the DK isn't quite there to tank the damage through the 
burn damage coming out from TNC is pretty nice. It's still level one fire spirits, but you land that, you land the Icarus. There's not much Alina can really do. Step lively now. So it builds up there for Inspector, considering that early death. I think the big worry for SMG still lies in that mid we were talking about. Like Moon off to the slower start. He's forced to call for a rotation from Afu. Stabilize the lane. It's a lot of commitment to hold down that mid. And this benefits our melt. Like, he might be lagging a bit behind in EXP, but he's got easier jungle access. He's got a massive spike in delaying fights with a ghost ship. For Moon, once he hits six, seven, he needs to start looking for his towers. He needs to call his supports forward to get that objective. And it's much more sensitive for me to hit those spikes compared to our melt. That it is. A lot of uh, support kind of rotating across the map right now. Rodji will make the, the rotation over into that dire triangle, get some wards down. Armel's going to make his rotation up to try and secure the bounty, but Roger's going to stick around and try to be as annoying as humanly possible. I suppose this DP lane getting slightly harder as, as time goes on here for Armel, but he's doing just yeah, fine in terms of CS at the Your very least, and that might board. be all that matters as Roger. Look around, actually stack the camp for Armel. Interestingly enough, as now Arfu shows up. It's the strike array, but there's no follow-up to it. Roger's gonna try and run down, but it's gonna really not lead to much. Now mid one. He'll make the rotation up on the axe. He'll start taking the stacks away from the side of TNC. So stacking in the opposing jungle, but mid one was already kind of running up to, to take these stacks away and I like what I'm seeing from SMG, John. Yeah, it's just I'll really stand. good movement out. This lines up with the level 6 of Moon as well, so they're going for a push and oh, no. a fight in mid. Dyer's and cold feet, not going to lock him in mid one. He'll get the Dyer's call off. He's got the conquer, and now with the light strike array, they'll control him up and they'll dunk him down. Another great pick up there for mid one, and he's right back to farming. Meanwhile, the rest of SMG, they just push in the mid T1 tower. Really clean play out from SMG so far. They're just playing perfect here. Their axe has a free lane, top of the CS board. They're just taking those stacks away from TNC. They've got these really beautiful wards as well. That aggressive laning ward we've seen a lot of from the Major. Still in action, not be warded. The early ward in the triangle as well is catching TNC off guard. So all this information SMD has is really enabling them to group up early on. Like, they're leaving this Broodmother alone. It's not that scary. Like, Bach is just taking free farm, sure, but the axe progresses a lot faster, and he already he has that vanguard up speaking of the axe mid one say hello to bok bok not really too interested in sticking around and having a chat with mid one just would rather leave him alone for now as i just keep my eyes on that mid lane where you see moon he just hasn't left he just keeps applying the pressure really kind of making sure armel is forced to stick around and not really rotate on the conquer which is not going to feel very nice for him considering he is at that level six mark would love to go for a kill with that boat, but just doesn't really have the opportunity right now. And this is something else we kind of went over in the draft, but now that the mid-tier one's Radiance gone already, tower is under attack. they could really start applying, applying the pressure onto Gabby on that Spectre. It looks like they are already trying to make that rotation up to try and secure that top-tier one. And it's just super slow here for Gabby. Still saving up for that Echo Saber. Only has the power treads up. His jungle is being shared with Armel. So the stacks are going towards the Kunkka's way for now. The triangle isn't that safe to keep stacking up. The resources are fairly limited for TNC. And this is exactly what SMG need to do. I think uh, the next timing they're going to look out for is the next Exorcism here for Moon. And that should line up for that big shove up top. And once that top tower is gone, your jungle is really open. No mid, no top tier one means that all these stacks coming out from TNC are at risk. They're not going to be able to just constantly stay in that jungle as long as SMG play their cards right. And they are already clumping up. Exorcism's up in about a second here. Here we go, Gabby. Going to get spotted out. Spectral Dagger hey. does fly up at the Light Strike Array. There for a second onto Gabby, but no real follow-up to it. They might just wait for KP to have his Dyer's dragon form back up, and that's going to take another attack. roughly 20 seconds. I suppose you won't really need it with the Exorcism up on Moon already, but well, there you go. He just pops it. He does not want to wait for the dragon form. we just get started on that T1 tower. And I've got to say, John, I, I really like what SMG are doing. Just applying that pressure so early on. We're only eight Dyer's and a half minutes into this game. Feels like TNT just don't really have an answer yet. The aggression that SMG's kind of providing as they do TP more up, Tim's. But try to go on to Arfu. Radiant's bottom. Armel now is going to show up with KP. He does get the stun off. Arfu, he has the follow up, and that'll be a dead Tim's. 
<laughs> Earth, it lands, but KP, he's a Step tanky boy. He's gonna run away and... Well, they don't really fortified. take down the top tier one. They've done a lot of damage. Pretty much come, at it. come back at any time to get the job done. There's really no rush here for SMG. They've, they've still got Dragon Form for a little bit longer. Power's down to 560 HP. They're going to take a couple of pokes to take out. And the big thing for SMG is they are creating a Radiant lot of space. Like, uh, they're buying denied. out space for their Axe to keep farming. The lane for Broodmother solo against Axe is just never now. fun. Bop is not playing that lead. They are still trying to apply pressure, though. They are. You saw that bottom tier one. It didn't eventually end up going down, but mid one, he even denied the tower off. Even more gold being lost for the side of TNC. Clearly not a, a very good feeling as... You, you kind of look at the net worth board right now, and uh, TNC, they are falling quite behind. They're not a, a, a very good feeling for them. Maybe even kind of just forced to farm up the mid lane while he can. SMG, they, they keep sticking around that top lane. They know they want to go back after that top tier one tower. But having that X and back up as TNC, they're not really going to want to allow them to just take it for free. You want to just have that killed. big ulti up to be able to fight us now mid one. Does dunk a courier down, Bok. Loses ring of health and won't be able to finish off the Hood of Defiance. And now they have rotated more over, so call is there mid one. And you get X up by Armel, and here comes the boat right into the axe. Mid one, can he tank through this? He's a tanky boy, but not quite enough. He will eventually go down and Bok. Aim to kill the Broodmother, and that's a very important kill to get, though. Bok, Ice Blast is gonna land. Oh, he's gone. That is. So oh, depressing. Uh, that is that is depressing. Uh, he, he was way too greedy, Bok, going back to that camp, not respecting the fact that there's an AA. They know where he was. Bottom Blast across the map. Attack. Nice and easy kill for SMG to sort of even it out. And they've gotten space Dyer's for themselves to clean up that top tower. The top tier one falls. They find a trade, a core for a core in the bottom lane. Not great feeling when you lose your axe for a brood, but... The Brute is also the only hero on TNC that's doing really well. It's only Bok up there in that word. Look at everyone attack. else. Armel's lagging a bit behind. Gabby's still really hurting. Spectre just doesn't flash farm fast enough. Not this so could be troublesome armor, if it keeps eh? up here for TNC. Radiance Roger. Middle Tower is Roger. under does connect. Earth Spike is there to follow up, but Roger's not dying. The Haunt's in. They're trying to get the job done, but now Midwon shows up. Roger, he will eventually die. But now can they keep going? They'll try it onto our food, but... Lena is going to be just fine as TNC. Under attack. We'll take the position 5 AA life and that will be about it. They back off. I suppose for TNC, they've just got to take what they can get right now. Uh, that'll be one kill for them. That'll be enough. Yeah, it's uh, not the biggest kill. They had to commit Haunt for that on Gabby and he had to bail out because he got hit by the Ice Blast. So it's not the ideal set of kills for TNC, but they are trying to get that space. Net for it's still not too wildly apart, though. Mm -hmm. Be in trouble. Oh, we have a disconnection, KP. He might have 10 ping, John, but he's back in Southeast Asia, so the DCs <laughs> have started again for him. You need to Welcome back soon. home, sir. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately for Moon right now, it's a bit of an awkward scenario, John. He's, uh, he's being chased down by spiders, which, again, does happen quite a lot from where I'm from, and it's going to be a, a very scary kind of position here for Moon. You'll have our full round. You've also got a TP coming in from Rodji, but perhaps they can get another stun off, maybe lock down Moon and kind of burst him down ASAP. There's a lot of spinelings around him, so the damage shouldn't really be a problem. They even have the finger on Tim's. They can get it done though, Boat. And apply in, finger committed, Moon taking all the damage and will die. No problem for the side of TNC. In fact, they want to go for a bit more, but KP. Again, having a, a few issues here on the DK and wait it out and see what's going on. Yeah, uh, rather unfortunate. Lagging. Yeah, not well, it's Southeast Asia, right? Like some of the times it happens. <laughs> TNC just throwing it out there towards KP. Gabby saying they're used to it. As you have to be. <laughs> You're playing from the Philippines. You know, may maybe it's not lag. Maybe KP thinks he has lag. He's not used to the 10MS. Maybe that's it. Yeah. You know, he's just not used to not having the lane. It feels unnatural. Something's wrong. Still, TNC with that kill on Moon is 
pretty good. Like that's their first real big core kill out of the axe trade with the Broodmother. So this is going to be helpful for them. It can line up for a bit of a shove mid with a half minute where you don't have to worry about that exorcism. You don't have to worry about the Crypt Swarm clearing out all those uh, Spiderlings, which is really one factor from SMG we didn't quite talk about. It. Like Broodmother came in as a sneaky pick in that draft, but they already had... Uh, Dragon Slave from Afu uh, from the Lina. They've had Breed Fire from the DK, and they've had they have Crypt Swarm. So they had a lot of good wave clear to stop Bog from being effective. And you can see how hesitant he has been to send those spider links up front. It's just been really hard to micro them to get full use. And we need to see a little bit more coming out from those links. We need to see these towers start falling, especially mid to even out the map control to open up more space for Gabby to slowly build up on the Spectre. He's still having a really hard time. 4.3k net worth, lagging behind even Moon on the DP at 4.6. Bottom of all the cores. It's going to take a really long time for the Spectre to feel remotely scary in this game. That, that certainly will, John. He's going for the Echo Saber build-up, which does make enough sense and is going to speed up his farm a little bit, but it's going to be a while for Gabby, that's for sure. SMG, again, just looking so darn good in game one so far, and it, it does seem like they've kind of got their game plan in order. <laughs> you can never really count a side of TNC out as... What is that? Do you know what that is? Wallow. What's the voice line meant to mean? It's it's like an expression. The Wallow is like super... It's super versatile as a singlish thing. It can be like surprise. It can be like anger. It's a very versatile... I, I think it's technically like a junk word, a throwaway word. It's just expressive. So it's like surprise, anger, uh, excitement. You, you can tell, ah, wow, you're doing good. Uh, or you're surprised and stuff. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not very good with Singlish, even though I stayed there for eight years. But yeah, it's, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's just an expressive word. It doesn't really hold an inherent meaning. It's about the context. And... In SMGs, it sounds like it's more like uh, something bad is happening in the game. You know, that's when you tend to repeat it. Wallow, wallow, wallow. You know, you're being dived maybe or something. I know it's super hard to decipher without context, but that's that's a peek into Singlish. You know, it's a it's a very interesting blend of multiple languages. I think it's like technically three or four languages jumbled together there. So it is hard to read, Mike. Thank you for that, Jonathan. Was that uh that South South American one that you really enjoyed the uh the PPP one? I I can't do it. I, I you're the expert, John. There's uh it, it seems like it might be similar to that almost. Kind of PPP is more like generally in grief though. It's like sadness. Right. You you lost. Things aren't going right. Your team lost. You know stuff like that. In general, so it, it's not as flexible as Walawe. Not not quite. Not quite. But it's up there. It's up there. There you go. We still don't really have the reconnection from, uh, from Mr. Damien Chock. Very upsetting stuff here, but <laughs> well, he does come back rather soon. But John, that does give me plenty of time, and I don't think this would be an, an SEA cast without me asking this. Have you had Merienda, sir? Have we, have we filled up before we started the cast? Yeah, I had, I had uh, some breakfast. I have a can of mate mate by my side. I really do enjoy it, though. Like, it's, it's nice and refreshing. Good sip in the morning. Nice tea. Um, didn't have Merienda yet. That's down the line, Mike. You know, it's an afternoon thing. Stop asking me about it. It's so weird because it's like, you know, it's like an afternoon meal at three o'clock. Like in Singapore, that would be like high tea. It's like a hold on. You, after you, lunch. you told me that you eat merienda all the time. Like it's just an excuse to eat. And now you're telling yeah, me there's I mean, a time frame. Fair for enough. It. Fair enough. No, like there are different meriendas. There's merienda senna. I think there's something you call something in the morning. I, I forget. Um, I haven't I had a big meal yet. I will say I did have some great Indian food yesterday. And, you know, I lived eight years in Singapore. I ate a lot of Indian food. I've been looking for it in my city, in Davao. We have a lot of Indians, uh, Indian uh, students here, which is great. But I haven't found a good restaurant. I finally found one. We ordered like a biryani, a shrimp biryani. We had some butter chicken. We had some shah, shahi paneer, a nice tomato-based paneer. Oh, it was so good. I was so happy, Mike. Like, yeah. good Indian food is so hard to beat. It's really expensive, but it's so, so good. Paneer is the best. If you've never had paneer, head down to the hawker. If you're in Singapore, look for an Indian stall, grab some paneer, get a, I guess, naan works best with that. Grab a naan, 
have it, you're going to be really happy. Or just grab some biryani with it, mix it together. It's really good. It's not good for you, mind you. It's a, it's a lot of calories, but it's, it's, uh, it makes you feel happy, Mike, even for just a moment. You make me feel happy, John. Thank you for that. <laughs> SMG, looks like we do have the, uh, the full reconnection here, KP. We'll just wait for the, uh, the go-ahead to see if everything's fine with the internet. Good to know that KP's back on 10 ping, by the way. It really is hard playing from Australia, John. You know, people say, oh, it's just 100 ping. It wasn't that big of a deal. But it is when you're on when you're on this kind of scale of games where you're playing the best teams in the world and every Radiant kind of split second matters. PNC, you're going to head into that mid-tier one tower Stand now. Lively now. Your Admiral is on board. A slow chip there from Bok. Consider the fact Radiant's that Arnold right now, he does not have the boat. Attack. You don't have the finger from Tim's. You don't really have your big team fight spells out for the side of TNC. You don't really have the haunt either in case Gabby wanted to kind of join in here. But it seems as though they are slowly getting away with the chipping of this T1. However, mid one. Come in. Nice call away onto the spiderlings and at least clear some of those up from Bok. They will go ahead and protect that mid tier one. And I think that is very important, right? Because you let that bot that mid tier one go on the side of SMG and suddenly the, the map evens out. And TNC are gonna be able to create a lot more space for Gabby on that Spectre. So definitely a lot of emphasis here from SMG to not allow it to go down. Yeah, but they still managed to drag like four heroes mid for the defense. So you have a pretty Die. free amount of space there for Gabby. You just take that bot lane, dip into the triangle, Radiant's keep farming up. The Echo Saber is flying out soon. So that's going to be really helpful for Gabby to look for these haunt opportunities. What SMG need to do is still play aggressive. They still, you know, once you commit four years down mid, you've got to mid do lane. something about something here. If he's got the blink up, John, he's going to blink in right into Armel. We'll see if they can just try and burst him down. But that Lacuna, it just did no damage. Armel, he'll run out of there. In fact, he'll turn Ooh. right back around now with the bow down on some moon. He's trying to spurt side in his way to victory, but it's not looking great for him as the sun ray does fly in as well from Boomy. But it was going to be a really nice initiation, but Armel, he just took no damage. In fact, I mean, the pipe flew out from Bok, but I, I'm not sure if that was what it was. It felt like the Laguna did nothing. Yeah, it's just, he's just really beefy right now on that Kunkka. Not quite the target you want to jump first. They had to back up there as well. The big thing there for TNC was the kill went towards Gabby. Radiance he just picked up the Echo Saber. He TP'd in for that fight. He managed just to get that kill off the bat, and he didn't have to use Haunt because it was on cooldown. So now TNC could just wait out the next boat, wait out the next egg if they need it, look for another Haunt opportunity, jump back in, and this is where it gets a bit shaky for SMG. They need to find more objectives. They need to find more pickoffs. This blink on KP is big, but you can't really jump a Kunkka. Your lane is still stuck at level 6. Level 1 Laguna, level 2 Dragon Slave. The magic burst on that Lena alone is not going to be enough. You need more backup to nuke her down, and the DP just wasn't quite in the right position. Exorcism is gone for now. It's going to be up in half a Radiant's minute. They could look for a push off the back attack. of that. But TNT are already taking over that bot. Yeah. Top Man, you just top. saw them, sir. They're going to run right into the DP and oh, Ice Blaster's there, but it won't boys. matter because the finger is out from Tim's. That's a bit of a mistake out from the CEO, John. They just <sighs> placed the ward down and it was dewarded by Tim's and Bok. And he just kept going forward for the creep, so... It does cost them in the end, and these are the kind of mistakes you don't really want to see from SMG. We talked about it. You're up against the Spectre. You've got to be careful. She is a late game powerhouse. In fact, top lane now, KP's been caught out. Expo is there. Armel will lock him down, but is it going to be long enough? Because Gabby's in now. Tim, he'll turn around with an Earth Spike out and the Sun Ray. Going to be another kill out for Gabby. Finds another last hit. And be more bad news for the side of SMG. It's, it's not quite lining up for SMG. They're trying to split push with the DK. They're not grouping up as four or five. For that full push potential coming out. They're being punished for that quite nicely by TNC. They play around this haunt really well in the Spectre. They've been really disciplined in handing those last hits off towards Gabby as well. They're still building up though. Mid one's still top of the last uh, of the network board. He's got the Mantis style up so you can send illusions out to Step deep push waves. Now, look for the blink next. Board for that shard once you hit that 20 minute mark so there are still some good timings here for smg it's just that they're giving a lot more towards dnc than you'd expect them to like box at the point where he's pretty scary on this brood and they're oh. jumping kp 
There. Okay, he's not really that tanky anymore. Not with that spirit the missile out. Oh, it's going to take care of it. In fact, Armel will take the kill with the Tidebringer hit. Spirit vessel going to be a, a real big problem for the side of SMG now. Is you're just not going to feel quite as tanky and. Hate to keep repeating myself, John, but this is not what you wanted to see attack. from SMG at this point, because Gabby on that Spectre is, is able to start catching up quite Radiant nicely. You see Bok down that bot side of the map, Dyer's he's just taking the bottom T2 fortified. tower. Looks like the rest of SMG not really going to be around to try and defend this. You've got Roggy, but he's not going to be enough. It's just the position 5 AA. Dyer are scanning. TP mid one in and set to try and just kind of spin his way defending this tier 2 tower. Ox gonna stick around though. He's, he's not afraid. In fact, Arm and Boomy's around now. In fact, top lane, Tim's, he's been caught out. He'll get dropped and there'll be one TP coming in from Boomy. Yeah, about it is bottom side. Roger now, he's been caught on the AA. It's a fly out. Kind of trade heroes here as position five is just dropping across the map. Top side, AP and Boomy. Staring each other down right now. Dyer's top tower he is under attack. He's about to find Boomy. Should have seen his courier. Icarus dive out the other way. Now the sun ray, but KP, he'll blink away. Towards the left is Armel. I have Radiant's a gander through the tree line with attack. that torrent, but we'll find nothing. SMG, they all back out. It's a safe play for them. They can't really go for the chip damage on that tier two. Uh, have to admit that the wards on the back line here from SMG are pretty good in keeping track of those TP rotations, but there's already a sentry here from TNC. So once they walk into vision range, they're not going to have that piece of advantage anymore, and they do take it out. So the next time they try to make that move on SMG, it's going to be a bit rockier. Still, they are smoked oh, up here no. going into the triangle. They ran right into the Spectral Dagger, though. That was very unfortunate timing, and now Tim's a nice hex out onto mid one. Can he control oh, him? Man. The core won't land either. In fact, Tanfu, he's starting to spinalings as they're trying to fight, and now the whole Tim will get the vision out, and they want to start the team fight. Uh, mid one, he's been caught out on the axe, and he's going to drop first. Roggy, he's trapped between a rock and a hard place. He'll be the third to die. SMG, bit of bad luck there. Again, just running right to the spectral dagger but radiance even then just unable to attack. catch out tims of the lion not gonna feel very good for them and it's gonna be another successful team fight for the side of tnc yeah it's it's rough now for smg 4k lead for tnc look at how far gabby's climbed up 8.7k net worth above moon above radiance kp now he was so far fall. behind in that spectre before now he's on a rise the only real farm here you have on smg is that axe and it all it's bo all boils down to the fact that they haven't been able to push like they've got a dp they've got the dk they've got the lena who can right click as well they haven't been able to focus in on a tier two and every single time they have they've been very hesitant they, they want to drop multiple wards behind they want to find where I'm dnc out. is and a plane they have caught out kp once again on the dragon knight trying to force in that lane but he's gonna get punished for it you can make the argument that he's making space for the team but it doesn't feel like enough. Mid one, he's gonna get run into now as well. Armel gonna spot him out and we'll go for the X. Got the X call, is there. Ice Blast is gonna land as well. You've got Boomy from the backside and Tim's. He'll show up right into the boat onto Roggy. They want the AA dead first. In fact, now they might count as Armel in a bit of trouble, but a nice egg on the high ground. They're still trying to go after this Funka, but he's just so darn tanky. They'll run right into the oh egg and now God. the current on the two SMG. They'll keep Lost the chase up. Armel ceiling. is still ticking down and does eventually die to Moon. And the Exorcism Spirits. In SMG, they're going to try and rush a Roshan. In fact, Bok does get caught out with the Yule Scepter. Mid one, going to chase him down. Battle Good Hunger song. there. Good enough. Catch him out with the Ice Blast and the Call Name. We'll try to burst him down. SMG, do you want to continue that Roshan? Like, never mind that. Mid lane. They found Tim's on the Lion. He's trying to set up for the team. Tim's, he'll go for a run. Looks like he should be just fine. I say that KP has another blink in just a few seconds, but no. Money Go for the easy breeze fire, doesn't connect, and that's going to be enough. It's a bit unfortunate for TNC to force that fight. The forward vision from SNG just allowed them a lot more positioning advantage there. 
and they still had your tier one to TP up to on that top lane. So they get the numbers in, they managed to punish out. It looked a bit wonky with all the spells coming through from TNC, but wasn't quite enough. I think TNC should still be happy. Exorcism's down. A push can't really come out. DK Dragon Form's down for a bit longer as well. And for TNC, well, Boat's back up, Finger's back up, Haunt's back up. So TNC are in a much better position to counter fight now if SMG want to force an issue somewhere. And even with the egg down, enough on hand to play with. It does catch out the Phoenix, but he's going to be all right. In fact, Gabby, he just taunts in. Roddy, he's going to die immediately. And now mid one, he needs to back off. But the X is there right into the boat. They've got the X again. They'll finger him down. Arfu going to try and TP and barely gets his out with his life intact. Now TNC. When those two heroes dead, John, they're going to rush the Roshan pit. And it's not going to take quite long either. Yeah, and this is, this is scary for SMG. Like, they might have seen both, they might have seen the finger drop, but Egg is back up for Boomy. So even if they commit here, knowing that a couple of spells are down, just having the Egg in this area makes it really tough, and that Roche does Roshan not last long enough in the way. Top. First Age is going towards Gabby. It's going to be harder to pin down the Spectre. And TNT, they're just riding through that power spike from SMG. The most important time for SMG was the 15 to 20 minute mark. We're at 23 minutes now. Mid one is still top in that word, but this core axe needs a lot more itself to really start catching up. The BKB is going to help, but beyond that, he's he's really going to need to put this game on his back. And we've seen a couple of teams do that in different regions, particularly in Eastern Radiant Europe. But it does take some time, and you're you're dealing with one of the best late game carries in that specter. So it's going to be a tough road ahead for mid one here. Yeah, this is a tough smoke as well, but KP he does find a great target to get started. Or get Tim's on the line. <laughs> TNC immediately will just TP right out of there, not wasting any time. You do not want to fight without Tim's. Actually, you don't really have the haunt up either right now, so Abby would prefer to just kind of wait that out. Though, Boomy, TP is going to be there. They won't have the vision. Let's get himself out, so. You got a nice lying kill. It's. Cost you a four-man rotation, and it's not going to feel quite as good as it probably would have if you found another. You can see, probably still going to be pretty satisfied with how that all went. Yeah, you don't really mind losing your line. It's not like there's anything big teams is waiting for at this point. He's got the blink going for the four staff. He's pretty much set. Uh, I think SMG are using this opportunity to take over the jungle, maybe look Step to shove right in that top tier two, but they're just never in a good position for it. Attack. The jungle is still heavily in control by TNC with the spider webs around. Bok can just jump around and Nutty's clear burn. out what they're trying to do there. So they're forced to back off, even with that big pickoff on the lion. And this sort of stall game just benefits TNC much more. Your specter is building up. Everyone else is getting opportunities to farm and get some EXP going as well. Our melt's just about level 18 mark with a max level ghost ship, making these fights much more obnoxious as well. The lower cooldown in boat. Uh, you've got Bok getting closer to his ags, and that should allow him even more control on the map with those added spin webs and the added move speed. So there's a lot lining up here for TNC as this game slows down. SMG... They're starting to feel the pressure. They're not splitting off from a group of four or five anymore. They're just constantly sticking together as a team. It's just that they're not finding openings with this numbers advantage they have Step on here. Now. Your admiral not, is on board. You start to get very worried as well with that eye of Scotty being uh, being built up here by Gabby. It cause a, a lot of issues for the side of SMG. Suddenly KP and, and mid one just not going to feel quite as tanky. Or even Moon on the DP not going to be able to siphon as much HP to himself. I have to get very concerned for SMG in this game one. Top lane. Moon, do not walk up to that creep, sir. I'm mean, just kind of waiting and there's some lines being drawn out. See the side of SMG. While they'd love to be the ones kind of being aggressive right now, they realize they can't really fight at the TNC. Especially while Gabby has that, that horn top. At Moon, going to show himself, they'll go in, they'll get the Hex off, and it looks like they might just burst him down. At Gabby, he wants to go for a bit more now, he found Roger, but instead will chase down KP, the oh, ex-teammate, but for the BKB TP out and make it out. Roger won't be so lucky. Go down on the AA, and going to be another top tier one tower going down here for the side of TNC. Radiant structures Gee, uh, you've fortified. got to tell me, John, how do they get back into this Dyer's game? It's looking very attack. rough. 
Radiance it's all in on this core axe. Attack. Mid one has his BKB flying out. Radiance he has a little bit more Stop. forward presence when he does dive in. He needs to get some really big calls. The follow-up has to be there from SMG. We need Radiance to see the exorcism and the attack. dragon form used near Dyer's towers. Tower so you want to transition attack. from these fights into objectives. TNT is just not giving that killed. opportunity. They're constantly keeping these waves shoved in. They're playing right at the edge of where SMG would be really be able to find anything after a fight. So even if they lose a fight for TNT, Radiance there's no transition to objectives. Look up, SMG. They're going to try and get something done. Step lively now. Hims might just be targeted. This will be the first one they run into. And, well, Blink not going to be there. Gabby goes for a Spectral Dagger. But he's just so darn tanky right now that he doesn't mind running into five heroes. He ages up. He's got a DD rune. He's got that Eye of Scotty now. Radiance it, it's kind of like, how do you kill him? Attack. He's just going to walk away. Instead, they ping out our mill. They'll go for the stun with the ice blast out before the BKB does fly out. They'll take him down. Nice start for SMG. Tims. His TP cancelled. It looks like he'll be the secondary to die, but he'll try to go for the full start towards the south. He might just make it. But no, KP. Blink right on top. Get the job done. And that seems to be the key. Just try and fight TNT while the horn's not available. Exactly what SMG is doing at the moment. Radiance get a, a tier two mid tower while attack. they can. They can get a thumb before TNT feels like they need to try attack. and defend this, but it looks like they are just going to let this one go. Yeah, I think they can afford to. You've got the spiderlings moving forward to creep cut, Dyer's so the tier three is not going to be under threat. Uh, they were sort of shoving in the top anyway. Top tier two is about 546 HP just from the creeps. So TNC can look to force another fight in that area. Ooh. Roshan still down for about two more minutes. No Roshan. other objectives for SMG to take except that outpost. So they're denying out some XP per minute, which is nice. I don't think TNC is going to mind that too much. For TNC's part, they know Exo's down. They know Dragon Form's down. They've got Haunt ready. They've got Egg ready. They can group us four and just look for an opportunity here. He's still got that Daily Rune in his bottle as well. Uh, very, very scary stuff here on the Spectre. See, for now, hold back as SMG. They'll enjoy the free time. Looking at mid one right now, I I'm kind of wondering what itemization he wants to go for. That BKB up. Next item here. Good look towards, I guess, something like the AC to counteract the AC that's going to come out here as well in RML. So you even out the minus armor aura, and the attack speed's Dive. always nice going for this scan. build on the axe. He is still keeping it open. He's got the travel sub, so that fixes some issues playing uh, for protect one, or at least having mid one play in a different lane. He can join these fights easier now. They just oh, need to find opportunities. He's got the call out onto the Phoenix, but Tim's is there with the Earth Spike and Boat is going to fly in to make sure they can protect that Phoenix's Gabby. He'll go into the backside, trying to go up the supports. Now Sunray's out with the Egg on SMG. They're going to just try and back their way out of there. AP going to try and fight his mid one. Jumps back in with the call out, but it's not looking great for the side of SMG. Where's your team fight? Where's your finger out, KP? He will survive for now, but not for long. We'll get taken down by Bok and now Armel. He'll be the one to be chased down as Gabby. The rest of TNC just looking to back off, but Bok is looking to restart the team fight. Back in. Who looks to be the target here on the laner, but he is a very, very fast laner right now, just running away. Instead, they'll try to focus down Moon as the X is going to be there, Armel. He'll get there in time. They found a much better target. That'll be a death drop of going down. Uh, a bit of a prolonged team fight, but after the initial jump in SMG, they just don't really have the follow up right now with this trial. No, it's just not there. Like, the egg was not in the best spot for TNT. They did manage to cut off some of that Radiance approach with the high ground, but SMG attack. was forced to pop their BKBs earlier. We saw TNT, Armel ran forward fallen. after the BKBs of SMG. Uh, expired he had his bkb ready on that kunkka and they couldn't do anything to stop the kunkka they couldn't do anything to stop the specter the spacing out to tnc was super disciplined as well very nice pick up though mid one setting up there with roji and arfu i'm gonna take down armel on the kunkka so it is still rather back and forth in terms of kills here as smg they are not bowing out yet it's a 13 to 19 3k net worth lead remaining for tnc now mid one, he'll get a little bit more aggressive in that dire jungle. 
Trying to find himself another target to get the call off on. Will indeed end up just TPing out and going back to farming. Not really revealing what his next item is yet. Just holding on to that gold. As you always have so much damage potential here with this carry axe. Mid one can get the right jump in with those mantra illusions. Can just completely blow somebody up. Now, Roshan gonna be spotted out. SMG, they're right in. No second guessing it. Finalings, I believe, were on the way, but TNC, they may have no idea this is actually happening as they have not made the rotation to try and fight this. There's gonna be a 4v5 for now anyway, but see slowly slowly making their way over or trying to take the outpost to, to give Armel a TP point. That Roshan still dropping. Spiderling's gonna give the vision over. Oh, he'll show up. Mid one looking for a call attempt, but won't have the blinker. Now Hawthorne, they'll have plenty of vision with that. Ice Blast to fly through, but there goes Arfu. Aegis is on the deck, Moon. He does pick it up, but he might lose it immediately as he does go down. He popped his BKB before he went down. He won't have it available now for the next fight. Roji has been caught by Gabby and with the nullifier, he'll take another. Moon, he's going to try and run, but Fox on his tail. Real mess out. Goal the side of SMD and or for TNC. Radiance Middle Tower. Like another tower. It's uh, it's awkward for Fair SMG. They immediately lose the Aegis. They do at least manage to grab this Ag shard onto Moon. So he's got the Ag shard ready to go for him if he wants that additional Spirit Siphon charge and the potential Middle fear that comes out. Uh, issue is they're losing Radiance a lot of objectives off of this. Tier two faults, mid tier three, Radiance high ground being siege. They will have they will not have egg to play with here on TNC end. But there's no extra system as well on Moon's respawn, and the DK Dragon form is going to be up. But this is really just going to be down on Step maybe looking now. for a big jump Your with mid one. And TNC respect that. They pull back. They just know that. All right. We won that fight in Roche. We didn't get Aegis. High ground's a bit riskier. They can afford to sit back and wait. They're not in a rush. They've got the Spectre for late game. They've got an 8k lead. 13 to 23. SMG is the one under pressure to keep trying to force these movements out. To keep trying to find some objectives. With their, with their own push coming through, but it just never pans out. TNC is super disciplined with how they play with a Spectre, and it's just always a massive risk when you take Roche fights like that. Like, there's haunt. Like, you just can't be secure in a Roche pit, even if you know where the rest of TNC are. Gabby can just pop right in, and you don't have any way of stopping that in the Spectre. You think this might be the uh, the impact of Mushi as well, being the, the coach for TNC now? Like, they, they do seem to be a lot more disciplined the side of TNC. Oh, yeah. A very clean gameplay so far. Oh, yeah. It, it definitely is a factor, I think. You have to consider Mushi, not just with his uh, experience in the scene for such a long time, but specifically against SMG. I'm sure he knows a lot about these players. You know, all Malaysia, mostly Malaysia, Malaysian players. So it's a lot easier for him to find a he knows their playstyle, he knows their, knows their tendencies. So he's actually feeding TNC a lot of information. They go with a slower draft, knowing SMG is going for the super quick draft. We talked about the Spectre being in that first phase because they had a game plan. They knew SMG is going to try to run them down. They knew how much space they had to buy for themselves. And that's uh, what we're seeing right board. now. Like they're, they're holding the game oh, quite nicely. Oh, SMG, smoke though, smoke. you're smoked up. On TNC. It's a vision KP, he'll get the blink off. They want the Phoenix set immediately, but they can't burst him down. He has the Aeon disc and now mid one, he missed the call out. There's your haunt disc from Gabby, right up to the backside. Roger and Arfu already gone and Moon, he got the lead as well. KP, he's trying to run, but he cannot get away from the side of TNC. They will chase him to the ends of the earth. There's only one left, it's gonna be mid one. A nice blink away, is it gonna be enough? It will be. But he lost four of his heroes pretty Dyer's much instantly. It, it wasn't attack. even close. Oh, that that was tough for SMG. Like, KP now. was BKD'd up while TPing. Board. He got caught at the edge of the egg. Dyer's like, top right tower at the max range attack. of 1,200. Popped down in low ground. And SMG, like, so many things have to go right for their team fight to work. They have to get that call. They have to burst one hero down. And that surprise Aeon disc coming out Radiance was just too much to deal fallen. with. As your tier Radiance 3 tower done with these spiderlings, it, it doesn't take very long to push down these racks. That'll be one. It's just a matter of whether TNC want to keep going, but it seems like so much of this team fight is about Gabby having that haunt up. 
Seen every team fight. He gets Radiant's the horns off. He'll tower. take down He's the back attack. lines. Arfu and Roger just unable to survive as soon as that horn is popped. And then the team fight is just basically won. It's uh, it, it's proving Radiant's to be a real problem. And on top of that, John Gabby just found a DD room. <laughs> kind of mistimed the bottle there, unfortunately, so he doesn't get to bottle it up. But this is pretty scary. Like, if they do look to force the issue right now here Step on TNT's end, it, it's just not enough from SMG to hold back the spec. They have to land the call, they have to land the Ice Blast. They have to make great use of this uh, DK Dragon form along with the Exorcism as well. And once you pop those spells, there's no opportunity to go back in. Once Exorcism's down, once the Dragon form's faded, your heroes are just not going to be as effective as what TNC has on hand. And they just have so much more to play with, even without having these spells. So it's harder for SMG to hit that tempo. I think we need to see them go for another smoke play. It's risky. With the state of the game, but that's probably their best opportunity to really find a the pickoff they need to start trying to bounce back in this game. I mean, Horns back up is going to be a, a pretty big issue now for SMG. You've got the Bloodthorn on mid one. Like, he's a very farmed axe, but it's not really translating to team fight wins right now. Look at TNT. Look how aggressive they're posturing at the moment with the smoke out now. Looking to go into that mid lane. And another pick off. And there you go. There's your horn tip. Who are they going to go on first? They Torn. found the big one. They found mid one of the axe. But there's no help around. They are going to let him die without buyback gold. He just bought the Bloodthorn and they even found more Moon. He gets Icarus dive on. There's your shadow stepping from Gabby. In fact, never mind Moon. They'll take down Roddy first. And now with the X back. There is no X back, but it won't matter because Tim's is there with the Earth Spike. Locking down Moon. They will not chase that far in. In fact, Armel now will get stunned up by KP, but look at Gabby. Right in on our food. KP, he can't get away from this. An ultra kill for Gabby, and there's your GG call being made. TNC. I've got to give him credit, John. I mean, it's the first game of the qualifier, but my goodness, are they looking clean. Victory. Oh, yeah. They're maintaining what we saw from the Animator. Their performance is looking solved. The draft looked like SMG had it, right? Like, they had these picks that made sense. They had a way of counteracting that Brood early on. Bok felt like he had a really...
You casting on my 